In Morocco, as in all parts of the Muslim world, people should observe the five pillars or duties of Islam and attend the mosque regularly. They also visit the shrines of saints, for many Muslims believe that saints and holy persons can intercede with God on their behalf. High in the Atlas Mountains lies the shrine of Sidi Shamharoush, a legendary saint revered throughout Morocco. Each year, people make the pilgrimage to the shrine in search of grace and blessing, or for help with specific problems, promising to return if their prayers are answered. The city of Marrakesh has nearly a hundred shrines, each dedicated to the memory of a local holy person or a more widely known Islamic figure. The mosque and shrine of Sidi Bel Abbas is the most sacred, for Sidi Bel Abbas is the patron saint of Marrakesh, one of the seven saints believed to guard the seven gates of the city. Near shrines and mosques like this sit fortune tellers or shuafas who are in touch with spirits. Spirits, unlike saints, have never been alive. They inhabit the space between heaven and earth, between the known and the unknown, and they sometimes meddle in human affairs. Spirits may also be called upon to predict the future and to influence the events of everyday life. Shawafas manipulate a variety of objects. They heat lead, and the spirits help them interpret the shapes into which it falls as it hardens, or they analyze the fall of the cards. Fadila and Aisha, two close friends, consult a Shawafa named Saadiya who has an established reputation and a private clientele. Fadila is barren. Her brother is ill in a distant city and wants her to come and care for him, but she is uncertain whether or not to go. Saadia has a close relationship with a benevolent spirit named Sidi Mimoun. Sidi Mimoun gives Saadia messages, which she transmits to her clients. الله يعلي فرشتك الله يوقف علمك الله يعمر بوش ودنا الصيحين يقول لكم فتح السر انتي تقدمتي هادو عندي تنطلبوا الله وتعالى الله يوقف علمك ومرة تتقبلوك امية فوق المية صلي عنه انتي وان انتي الله يعلي فرشتك وان انتي مقت ما بغيت تبقى عيل بحر بغيت تهرب ما عادت كل غادي مشي ماذا شدك سبعة وليش راس بعات وليش لا شدك وجلس وعاتها متيلك وتكتم بين الشليب وما يكون عمل ما يكون نصور لك وهذا وتي حبوا عبد الكتيلنا العمل بين التينا وأني أرزق بين تيك وأني أخسك تصور لي شوية أتقل كتمت لي شوية كان سعر الجيل غموجة تشاش الشوارع وكل الناس اللي تقتمي عندهم وتدخلي عندهم وجي وشك منك وجيهم الغيرة منك على صوابة كورة تلو وكان يستعرض دخولي المكنة ويكون لنا وانيا بنتي عاست على كرشك شوية ما كنت كنت عندك النصر وعندك القبول وعندك النصر قابل لنا ولنا بنتي ردت بالك شوية كان الناس اللي تتقدموا لنا في العمل لنا ونصر لنا ولا اقتعطي البحر انا باري منك ماشي على سبعة ورجال عندو لك لا اقتعطي البحر مشي هنا انا ما كان والو عندك قلت بالك شتاح يوه بوشي تغريق الرسل يوه شوف يترق اللي تسلك الكلة تقولي بيا لما شو يلعبو بنا والكبداء ما هنتنا والراس مشطون علينا وانا بنتي تقتمتي وقولي اللي سبعة ورجال في سا يوه نهار يطلق الله للسراح راية دلينا وين ولا مشاعة نمشي بعدا نقعد حتى نهار يدوز ونجيبو هنايا صلي عنتي 
تمي تذكر الله يرتي عليك وحدي تذكر وديري ديري تطبخ تفوتي خاو تيري كل شيء وحجرة الفك وفوسخ لي ورانتي متبوعة انتي ويا Relationships with saints and spirits are a source of strength. But like relationships with family and friends, they need to be cultivated if they are to survive. People call on relatives on feast days, pilgrims visit shrines, and Shawafas periodically renew their ties with their spirits in order to maintain their power. Once a year, Saadia celebrates her relationship with her spirit, Sidi Mimoon, in a ritual reminiscent of the marriage ceremony. She invites clients, relatives, and neighbors to her home to witness the reunion and to share the feast which follows. The ritual, like a wedding, begins with an animal sacrifice. A black goat and two sheep are purified and passed three times over Saadia's head. The sacrifice will both purify her and give her power. Participants in the ceremony wear colors, red, black, green, yellow, and white, which are identified with religious organizations. Sadia's white bridal veil is covered with a number of different colored scarves. As the animal dies, Sadia herself is purified with incense and embraces the sacrifice. The musicians employ a particular beat with castanets and drums, which is thought to encourage the progress of trance and spirit possession. Saadia's ecstasy continues for nearly an hour. Her veil is stained with the blood of the sacrifice, just as the bride's garment is stained with the blood of the marriage consummation. Sadia's family belong to the Ganawa Religious Lodge, whose members say they are descended from Bilal, the black slave freed by the Prophet Muhammad. The musicians are also Ganawa. Their instruments, their rhythms and chants are characteristic only of this group. Sacrificial animals are skinned and cleaned in preparation for the festal meal. Any person who responds to the particular rhythms of the Ganawa music 
they feel compelled to dance. Sadia is joined by two older Shawafas and a younger woman. The older ones were once in touch with Sidi Mamoun, but are now more or less retired. The younger woman is apprenticed to Sa'adiyah and hopes to become a Shawafa herself. Her relationship with Sidi Mamoun is just beginning. of rose water are thought to revitalize a person in trance. to reach a level of consciousness where they can defy physical pain. They may strike themselves with sharp knives and yet not be harmed. In this way, they demonstrate that they have detached themselves from the physical world and are in a state of grace. influence in human affairs, and Chihuahuas cannot deal with all situations. Saints have far greater power, for they are thought to be closer to God. Each year, the annual celebration of a saint like Sidi Shamharush draws thousands of men and women, not only from nearby villages, but from cities and towns all over Morocco. For Sidi Shamharush is said to be one of the seven spirit kings and an arbiter between good and evil spirits. Pilgrims climb to nearly 8,000 feet by mule or on foot to the shrine at the base of Jebel Tubkal, the highest mountain in Morocco. The difficulties of the journey are said to be welcomed by the pilgrim, for they increase the efficacy of the pilgrimage. The first stage of the celebration takes place at the village of Aremt. Here the tents of merchants and entertainers have been set up, for the celebration is not only a religious occasion, but has important social and economic functions. Young and old gather from surrounding mountain villages. The feast also provides an opportunity for families, separated by employment or schooling in faraway cities, to be reunited. In the afternoon, pilgrims assemble to witness the central public event, the sacrifice of a black bull 
in the courtyard of the religious lodge. Clad in white and carrying a banner, the members of the Brotherhood of Sidi Shamharush process ceremonially into the courtyard. The bull is brought in. It is given each year by one of the four villages in the valley and offered in honor of the saint. congregation is blessed by the religious leader. All the people are now in a state of purification, having taken part in the sacrifice. At this moment, they request great favors from God and may expect them to be granted. blood of the sacrificed bull is believed to contain powerful grace. Some pilgrims taste it in the hope of sharing in some of its power. After the sacrifice at the lodge, pilgrims may go on to complete the second stage of the pilgrimage. They will climb to the shrine itself and spend the night there. Aisha and her daughter Rabia are making this final journey together. Aisha is concerned about her older son and worried that Rabia has had no offers of marriage. The shrine was built according to direct orders from the saint himself. Legend states that he appeared in the village of Aremt perhaps 500 years ago and asked for a horse. By night he rode the horse silently around the mountains and by day he turned into a black dog. On the seventh day he announced, I am Sidi Shamharush, king of spirits and human beings, for my mother was human and my father a spirit. Build me a shrine. But where, asked the villagers. I will leave a sign when I disappear, he replied, and the sign will be stones upon stones. A shepherd boy found the pile of stones. 
and the white domed shrine was built over it, where the mountain spring gushes forth from the rocks at the head of the valley. Villagers also say that Sidi Shamharush was a real man, a pious scholar who lived until the 1890s and is buried here. On first arriving, pilgrims pay a visit to the shrine itself and pray. The water of the mountain spring is sanctified by its proximity to the shrine and women bathe in the pool behind a wall built beside the spring to protect their privacy. They collect the healing water to take home to their relatives and neighbors. In the stone shelters surrounding the shrine, pilgrims spend the night hoping to dream for these particular dreams offer clues to the solution of individual problems. They are interpreted by one of the religious teachers from the lodge. In the morning, Aisha has two dreams to report. قال لي هذه انا اعطيتها لك تديها واخا وانا قلت له ما عندي فاش نديرها قال لي لا لا انا ما عندي فاش نديرها واخا تجيبي خرقات راسك اييه وتعودي فيها هذه الامانه تديها معك واخا مزيان تفسير نتاعها كيفاش مزيان الرزق ديالك الرزق الرزق ديالك الحمد لله الحمد لله اييه وملي جينا هنا البارح اييه نعسنا بالليل سيدي شمهاروش سيدي شمهاروش اييه كنشوف خير وسلام واش انا نعسى واحد عندي واحد من المسافر اييه بعدين هو جا آه. قال لي امي انا جيت قلت له وليدي كيف داير قال لي امي جيت لك واحد المفرا جديد مزيانه وجيت لك وجيت انا بصحه جيده آه. وقلت الخدمه ديالي مزيانه الخدمه ديالها ديالها كيفاش الخدمه مزيان ديالها مزيان اه القلب المقرش هي القلب آه كان مغيره شويه دابا لاباس عليه الحمد لله Pilgrims have been climbing to the shrine of Sidi Shamharush for hundreds of years. Today, more people than ever are coming to the shrine, for taxis and buses allow them to travel more easily to the starting point of the pilgrimage on the lower slopes of the mountain. In a plains village near Marrakesh, where Aisha was born, a new shrine is in the process of development people are already beginning to revere the mound of stones, marking the spot where a pious villager who died last year used to sit and talk with passers-by, advising them on religious matters and offering help to those who were troubled. The villagers soon hope to build a whitewashed dome over the rough stones. Throughout its history, Islam has accommodated many diverse forms of worship appropriate to different social circumstances. But people perceive their own mosques and shrines, their own saints and spirits, as all part of the wider Muslim tradition.